Hello, everyone. Today we're going to have some fun with vectors by learning how to add them using the triangle, or tip to tail, method. It's like solving a puzzle with arrows. To understand how vectors matter in real life, let's hop on an airplane. Suppose the plane is flying forward, but a strong wind, called a headwind, is blowing directly against it. Take a look at the diagram. Can you figure out how this headwind will change the plane's travel time and fuel use? Now, let's look at another situation. The plane is flying forward, but this time a strong wind, called a tailwind, is blowing in the same direction. Can you figure out how this tailwind will affect the plane's travel time and fuel use? Finally, let's look at one more situation. The plane is flying forward, but this time a strong wind, called a crosswind, is blowing from the side, perpendicular to its motion. Can you figure out how this crosswind will affect the plane's actual path, travel time, and fuel use? Now, let's jump into another real-life example, swimming across a river. Imagine you aim straight toward the opposite bank, but the river current pushes you downstream. As you can see, in all these real-life situations, both speed and direction matter. To really make sense of them, we need to talk about vectors. So, what's a vector? It's just a way to show two things at once. How big something is like distance, speed, etc. Which way it goes. The direction, that's it. Vectors are like super arrows that tell the whole story. Now, let us look into this example. If you say, I drove 100 miles from Washington, D.C., you could have gone in any direction. But if you say, I drove 100 miles east from D.C., you've given both the distance how much and the direction which way. That's exactly what a vector represents. Here's an important rule when working with vectors, the signs matter. Think of it like this. If the vector points right or east, call it positive. If it points left or west, call it negative. If it points up or north, that's positive. If it points down or south, that's negative. Sometimes the direction isn't straight up, down, left, or right. It could be at an angle. For example, an airplane might fly 100 kilometers at 30 degrees north of east. In that case, we break it into parts using those same sign rules. Let's dive into a simple swimming problem. Imagine a swimmer trying to cross a wide river. The current is flowing north at 5 meters per second, while the swimmer can swim east at 10 meters per second relative to the water. Here's the challenge for you. What will the swimmer's actual speed be relative to the ground? And in which direction will the swimmer really move? Hint, the swimmer won't go perfectly east. The current pushes him off course, so his path becomes slanted. Can you figure it out? Let's solve it step by step. Draw the two arrows vectors. Draw the swimmer's velocity, 10 meters per second to the east. Draw the river current, 5 meters per second to the north. These two arrows are perpendicular, that is, the angle between them is 90 degrees. You can move a vector anywhere on your page without changing its length or direction. Sliding the vectors are okay, but rotating or stretching is not okay. Place the tail of one arrow at the tip of the other either order works. Now you have an L shape, perfect for the triangle method. The first two diagrams above are correct but the last one isn't. Why? Because the last one changed a vector's direction. Remember, you can slide vectors, but don't rotate or resize them. We'll use the top diagram. It keeps both vectors' lengths and directions the same, so the tip-to-tail triangle is valid. Now let's finish the picture. Take your two arrows, the swimmer's eastward arrow and the river's northward arrow, and connect them. Draw a new arrow from the tail of the first vector to the tip of the second vector. Make this arrow green so it stands out. This new arrow is called the resultant. It shows the swimmer's actual speed and direction. 
Finally, mark the angle between the resultant and the east direction as theta. That's the angle we'll calculate next. Here's a clearer picture that shows the resultant arrow along with its magnitude and direction. In any right-angled triangle, the sides are connected by the Pythagorean theorem. It says, x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Also, we can write down the trigonometric relationships. Sine theta equals x divided by z, cos theta equals y divided by z, and tan theta equals x divided by y. We use the Pythagorean theorem to find the resultant. x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Substituting x equal 5 and y equal 10 we get. 5 square plus 10 square equals z square. Now solving, we get z equal 11.18 meters per second. That means the swimmer's actual speed relative to the ground is 11.18 meters per second. The next step is to find the angle theta that is 10 theta equal x divided by y. Here, x equals 5 and y equals 10, so tan theta equals 5 divided by 10, which equals 0 0.5. In order to find theta, we have to take the inverse of it, that is theta equals tan inverse 0 0.5, which is equal to 26.57 degrees. To find tan inverse, you may use your calculator, for example, TI-84. Press second followed by TAN and type 0 0.5, close the bracket and enter. So, what happened to our swimmer? Even though the swimmer aimed straight east, the current pushed him off course. The swimmer ended up drifting at 26.57 degrees north of east with a speed of 11.18 meters per second. This idea isn't just for swimming, the same principle applies to rowing a boat, kayaking, or even flying a drone in windy weather. Can you think of other real-life situations where vectors come into play? Now it's your turn. Go back to the three airplane scenarios from the start of this lesson and try solving them. Post your answers in the comments below. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll learn a new trick, how to solve vector problems using the component method. Stay tuned.